Hey, what's up, Reefers? If there's one topic I have not really talked about for the 135 gallon tank, it is dozing. I have hinted at what I have been dozing for quite a while, but I've never really addressed it. At this point, I feel like my dosing is pretty dialed in, so I am finally gonna share with you what I have been dosing in this tank. Tank is at a happy spot right now, so first thing first, I'm gonna do a ICP test. And the reason I wanna do an ICP test as well is because one of my dosing method, the Reef Moonshine method, requires periodic ICP tests to make sure all the trace elements is on point. In terms of ICP tests, I am a big fan of the ATI ICP test. I've tried other ones, but ultimately I always come back to the ATI one because number one, it tests the source water. Number two, it tests a lot of the elements that the other tests do not. And number three, it delivered the results in a really easy to read and friendly manner. And it just so happened that the Reef Moonshine method of dosing trace elements who is not associated with ATI at all. ISPTS of choice for them is also ATI, so it works out. One thing I really like about ATI is actually that they include return shipping labels. You don't have to deal with like shipping it as well as paying for the shipping. Shipping is already paid for, it's already baked into the price, although it is a little bit higher price than some of the other tests get out there, but I think it's worth the convenience. One week later. Now it's about a week and a half later, ICP test result came back, and now is when the fun begins. Let's take a look. So right here we can see that the resort came back on May 12th. The resort came back in a pretty easy to read table right here. There are certain va variables that I really pay attention to. Uh, number one, the most important for me is the salinity. Right now it's sitting at 34.59, so it's slightly low. I'll need to raise that, and I feel like this is really important because the salinity is gonna impact all the other values. The other one I really pay attention to is the carbonate hardness, and that is your alkalinity, and right now it's sitting at 8.98, which is good. Uh, I use this value to kind of double check my alkatronics reading, and right now it's uh, pretty spot on, so we're good there. The other values I look at is number one, magnesium, 1331 is slightly low, we'll raise it up. Calcium, 435, I would like it to elevate a little bit as well. And then to me, the most important ones are the nitrate and phosphate. I, you know I've been battling uh, dinoflagellate back then so uh, the nutrient is all over the place so those are the major elements that I really pay attention to when I get a ICP test result back now let's jump over to the trace elements uh, major and minor trace elements and this is where the fun begins so for dosing I already dose ATI coral essential pro which contains trace elements as well but at the moment because I'm also dosing calc wasser because I want to raise my pH I am not dosing enough ATI essential coral pro to kind of replenish all the trace elements and that's the whole reason why I started looking at different methodology in terms of uh, supplementing the trace elements. I landed upon the Reef Moonshiners method uh, because a few of the people I follow online seems to be really happy with what Andre has been doing with the Moonshiner methods. One thing that really attracted me to the Reef Moonshiners method is because a lot of the other uh, methods on the market just kind of like combine different elements into like A, B, C, D, E, etc. Versus uh, what Andre did here is actually break out all the individual elements and just those what you need. You do an ICP test, you see that, okay, I'm low, uh, say like boron. You can just buy the boron and those that. So to me, I feel like that makes a lot more sense and just more transparent and just more clear, uh, more simple. But at the same time, of course, when you add up all the costs, it may be a little bit pricier. Now, don't quote me on it because I did not really do a price comparison. But that said though, what I'm looking at here is actually a Excel spreadsheet that Andre put out for people who are doing the Reef Moonshiners method. Basically, you put in your tank volume here and then you just plug in what you got from your ATI ICP test results. And right here, it'll actually give you specific instruction on dosing. And some of these uh, elements, it's by other company as well. So it's not just what they sell. For example, right here for potassium, they recommend using the Brightwell, uh, the powder, powder mix. So in a nutshell, that's what the Reef Moonshiner method is. Basically, you can uh, buy and dose specific elements that you need for the tank versus you need to buy everything or like dose more than one element at a time. And for from that, I wrote down what I need this round. These are the uh, adjustments I need to do to the tank. I also have daily dosing according to my tank volume and the different elements I need to dose. And I have them actually broken out into a little eyedropper bottle, which I'll show you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
moments later. So these are all the dosing supplements I've collected. Uh, I've tossed a lot of the expired ones away already. These I think are still valid. So pretty much all of these I bought myself except for uh, the Brightwell Coral Amino. I bought once and then I tried it. I was talking to Kat, I told her that I liked it and she hooked me up with uh, more of them. Today's focus are these green bottles. These are the Reef Moonshiner elements right here. And these are all broken down to individual elements, which is something, once again, that I really appreciate. Just looking at what else I got here, we got the good old Vibrance, got the uh, Fish of Hexon Phosphate. This is the uh, sodium nitrate that I can use to uh, dose nitrate down the road, and Jim hooked me up with these guys right here. But right now I have elevated nitrate in the tank, so we don't need that yet. And we got man, all these other stuff that I have collected over the over the what i think it's probably only a span of like two years maybe it's not not that old anyways without shaming myself even more here is a list of elements that we need today to make some of these adjustments for magnesium i do have a bottle of the brightwell magnesium but this is not really making too much of an impact due to the size of the tank so i actually bought the powder form that should arrive any day now so this guy i'll probably hold on and use it for the mangrove tank by the way you may have noticed all these little uh, eyedropper bottles in like older videos. These are actually all elements. These are all these uh, reef moonshiner elements, except for the iodine. And the reason I did this is that just so that I don't have to open one of these like big bottle each time and pull elements out. I feel like I'm gonna risk contaminating them. And also, uh, I feel like the little eyedropper bottle just saves a lot more space if I just kind of lay it out here. The other cool thing about this eyedropper bottle I got is that it actually has the uh, volume marking on the dropper itself as well. So I thought that really handy. As to how accurate that is, who knows, but I feel like I'm not doing like a science experiment here, so I'm not too picky. And Andre did recommend the Cobalt Blue version, but I saw these like frosted amber version and I absolutely fell in love. Hopefully this uh, frosted amber version does just as good a job in preventing the UV from breaking down the elements as the Cobalt Blue one. And that's one thing I have to ask him um, when I have a chance to talk to him again. And as you can see here, besides elements, I also have the uh, dosage uh, for this tank labeled on this uh, little eye bottle here as well. Man, I'm turning into a pretty appropriate reefer if I may say so myself. There's no way I've done something like this in the past. I've actually bought two rounds of elements from him and also ran this program for about a month uh, before I kind of dropped a little hints in my videos and somebody pointed it out to him and that's when he realized, oh man, looks like inappropriate reefer. It's uh, in the program as well. And that's when we struck up a conversation. And that's when he asked like, if I've tried these two products, um, I just said no. And he went ahead and said, these over as well. Initially, I didn't really order them because I feel like I want to get my basics down and these guys a little bit tougher to quantify because you can't really say the result is due to X or Y, right? So that's why I didn't buy them in my initial order. From what I understand, liquid mud is kind of like miracle mud in some way, except this is liquid dosing. It contains trace elements that may be found in minerals. And this guy is essentially vitamin and carbohydrates uh, that the corals will benefit from. But again, it's kind of hard to quantify because I cannot point my finger at either product and say that this absolutely helped uh, the system. So one of these days, I really hope that I could get Andre onto one of these videos and maybe talk about just diff how different elements impact corals, how he came up with his particular formula in terms of like different balance of trace elements as well as how uh, these two products would benefit uh, reef tanks. It seems like my tank really depletes boron. Uh, last ICP test already added a bunch of boron but uh, roll mine about 48 milliliter. All right, I think we're pretty much good. I'm waiting for the potassium and magnesium powder to get here. Strontium will finish dosing tomorrow. And as you can see, this is based off of my ICP test last month. And that's kind of like my target for nitrate and phosphate. Dude, I am turning into a appropriate reefer. I'm not. It's kind of weird, but I like it. I like it. Four to six more days later. All right guys, now it's a weekend. The magnesium powder and potassium powder from Brightwell has arrived and I measure them out, dosed it, so we can officially cross the last two elements off the paper and the tank looks happy. I think. Are you happy? My goodness, it's like every single time I look at you, you got a little bit larger. I think one more year, I may have to kick you out of this tank. 
One random side note, since we're tracking elements right now, my Owl community took a nosedive this week. You see every day, kind of keep dipping and dipping and dipping and dipping. Uh, I double checked the Kaltwasa doser, the tube is slightly plugged up, but then everything is still flowing out. Um, calibration is pretty accurate, so that's not the issue. I mixed up new Kaltwasa two days ago, and then it really didn't impact much, so it tells me that the calc was still uh, fully saturated. It has not lost its uh, potency. So really, the only conclusion I have is the core really started uptaking alkalinity, which is weird, but I guess it's nice. But at the same time, I feel like the clam has really started stressing because of that. It's actually a lot better now because this morning, the uh, alkalinity was actually down to, I think it's like 7.85 or 7.9. Usually I try to aim for like 8.5 and sometimes even venture a little bit into 9. So the alkalinity has really dipped. Uh, as a result, I bump up the Kalkwasser and increase the uh, ATI Essential Pro dosing for part one, which is alkalinity. So I bump it back up a little bit. Right now it's holding steady at eight. So I started uh, bringing the elk back up as gently as I could in a decent speed at least. Uh, at least the larger of the clam looks a lot better, almost back to normal. The smaller one, the blue one, is still somewhat retracted in the shell. The mantle is not fully out yet, but this is already looking quite a bit better than the morning. I was like, I was like, I was wiping sweat from my brow, dude. Everything else in the tank looks good, so it's, straight, uh, it's like straight up just a clam that was affected. Um, so I'm really happy to get it resolved. So that's a quick little tangent. And this is another case of like how I'm so happy with the electronic. It let me see trend, even though I should have acted on this trend a little bit earlier, but during the week, I'm just busy back to back work and just taking care of the baby. On the weekend, I finally was able to address it and that's when the clamp started looking bad. I was like, oof, okay. I feel like auto tester for alkalinity especially is such a uh, indispensable tool for me now, especially when it comes to more sensitive critters. Um, of course, if you're just keeping soft calls and stuff like that, you probably don't even need to test your water. Just do water change and you're straight, just like my mangrove tank before. Um, mixed reef like this where things could turn and have like more sensitive critters like clams in there. Definitely helps a lot. So this video, we focus a lot on the Reef Moonshiners method. On top of that method, I also dose Calc Wassers as well as ATI Essential Pro. And these are all fantastic dosing products that deserve their own videos. In this particular video, I seem to have focused a lot more on the Reef Moonshiner methods, simply because this is new and exciting to me. So this is currently, I guess my passion is kind of piqued my interest. There are many, many ways to sell dosing for your reef tank. For this particular tank, I found the balance between Calc Wasser, ATI Essential Pros, as well as Reef Moonshine and Methods, all these mesh together just seems to find good balance. And it seems to be working for me. And because it is working, I don't want to tweak it too much because I'm comfortable with it. If I were to start with blank slate and set up dosing for a reef tank, I'll probably use Calc Wasser as a foundation and then use other products and build off of that and we'll go from there. But again, for this particular tank, this combo seems to work for me. And I don't want this video to serve almost like a guide. This is just me sharing my personal journey as one single hobbyist. I am no expert. I am barely intermediate. I'm still learning the rope. I am making big mistakes. And I'm hoping that by sharing my mistake here with you guys, it'll save some of you guys and save some critters from going through the same thing that I did and my uh, critters did. Sorry guys. So once again, this is not a guide. This is not a how-to. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not making any money selling any of these products. I'm I'm just sharing what worked and what did not work for me and hopefully that will be of some use to you as well. With that said, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. I'll see you next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Sharp. This, this pup knows how to swim. Good, Good job, job, buddy. Good mom. Good mom. Good mom. Welcome, Salwe. Stock is like... <laughs>